Welcome to our channel, Behind My Story. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hi, my name is Laura. I'm 23 years old, and I teach art. I recently got married to the love of my life, Norman. I considered him my friend, my brother, my son, and my husband. We love to prank each other, even after we got married. For instance, one time, I turned off all the lights in the apartment, dressed up as a monster, and scared the living daylights out of him when he came back from the store. Another time, he damaged my car. I put mayonnaise on his toast. I did worry sometimes that our jokes might go too far. I mean, he did get really mad at me once. He stopped talking to me for two days, even though I apologized profusely many times. After that, our pranks sort of stopped. I figured our pranking days were over. About a month later, I returned home to find a letter on the floor. I opened it and read it. If you don't pay us a hundred thousand by Friday, we will kill Norman. I smiled. Norman was pranking me again. When he returned home, I hugged him and showed him his prank letter. He read it carefully and his brow furrowed. He appeared seriously frightened and swore that this was not part of any prank. He told me that we needed to leave town as soon as possible. I asked him why, and he told me that before he married me, he had stolen a gold statue from a motorcycle gang. I asked him why he couldn't just return it with an apology, and he told me that the statue was worth a lot of money and could make us really wealthy. That night, an armed masked burglar broke into our apartment and confronted us with a gun. He said to Norman, Hello, Norman. Long time no see. You need to choose between the statue or your wife. Choose now. Norman was hesitant. Then he steadfastly said, I can't give up the statue. Take my wife. The masked man turned towards me. He pointed the gun at me in a threatening manner. I was frantic. I was staring at Norman in shock. Suddenly, the masked man ripped off his mask. It was Keanu, Norman's brother. Norman sat down, laughing so hard he could hardly stop to breathe. Between laughs, he said, This is payback for the last prank of yours. I was so mad at him that day, but it's all right. He doesn't know what I have planned for him. I was going into middle school when my parents told me they were splitting up. As a kid, you see other families split up, but you never think it could happen to your own family. When my parents first told me about the divorce, I was just like any other kid. I was confused and angry. I didn't understand what was happening, and I just wanted my family to be a family again. As time went on, I became less angry. I began asking more questions and realizing different things. Hearing every fight and listening to parents talk down to each other is not just scarring, but terrifying. I understand that once two people fall out of love, it's hard to fall back into it. However, that doesn't mean that it's impossible. I know that the decision to get divorced doesn't just happen overnight. But maybe it would be easier to try and remember what led you to get married in the first place. I didn't understand why this was happening, or what we did to make my dad not want to live with us anymore. How was I, a little girl, going to tell my friends that the reason I can't have a play date was because my dad moved out and I was spending the weekend with him? A million questions raced in my head all at the same time. My life was about to change dramatically, and I didn't even know how to deal with it. My name is Chloe, and this is my story. For most girls, including myself, your mom is the biggest inspiration in your life. She's the one you can always count on to cheer you up. After the divorce, my mom wasn't herself anymore. One day, I came back from school, and I saw her standing in front of the tall mirror in the living room and crying. I tried to hold her, but she pretended that she was fine. I have a younger brother. His name is Adam, and he's only 8 years old. I'm now 15. Adam is not aware of what's happening. He might be in denial. Anyways, it was my first year in high school, and I was so excited. But sadly, my mom wasn't. She used to be so full of life. And I kept wondering what had gotten into her. Maybe the divorce? But that was a couple of years ago. Everything at home was just dramatic. We even spent two days without food because we had little money. And my mom got fired from her job. Well, my dad sends us money, but it barely covered the bills. It was summertime, and me and my best friend Kim decided to take a part-time job. 
I told my mom and she barely smiled. But I was focused on getting away from all the drama and saving money. We both got jobs at the mall in a perfume shop. Well, between you and me, there was another reason I wanted the job. There is this guy called Liam who also works at the mall and I have a huge crush on him. The day I got my first paycheck, Kim came home with me. We were laughing and having a good time. We wanted to take a selfie with the first money we ever earned. My mom was in the background and she jumped up and moved out of the picture. Later that night, I finally had the courage to ask my mom what was going on. I said, Mom, why did it jump out of the picture earlier? My mom paused for a while and said, I just don't like pictures, Chloe. And that was quite shocking because my mom loves pictures. We have tons of photo albums. I went upstairs to call Kim. Well, we discussed work, Liam, school, and finally my mom. Next day at work, our boss offered a huge bonus to whoever sells more than five bottles of perfume. And guess who took the bonus? Of course they did. Right after my shift ended, Kim was still wrapping up with a customer while I waited for her. Liam waved at me. I blushed so hard and I waved back. He came over and asked for my number. He was about to say something, but Kim was done with the customer. Liam texted me that night. He asked me if I was free on the weekend. My eyes turned into literal hearts, and I said yes. Liam and I are officially going out on a date. I ran downstairs to tell my mom the good news. I took the bonus, and I have a date. I was just happy that something could finally take my mind off the divorce. However, I found my mom staring at the mirror again. I told her the news and everything. She already knows about Liam. I thought she would get excited, but she silently hugged me and said goodnight. Next morning, I went to work feeling all happy. Also, Kim promised we would go shopping for my big night with Liam. We finished work and went into a fancy shop to try on a few outfits. I picked out a white skirt and a pink blouse. And I looked perfect. I went back home and I wanted to show my new outfit to my mom. I found Adam doing his homework on the kitchen floor. And I asked him, Adam, where is mom? He replied, I don't know, she left in the morning with a big bag. Now what does that mean? Should I call my dad? I spent half of my paycheck on the new outfit. So I just went up to my room to grab some money and go to my dad's place. To my surprise, I couldn't find my money, not even a penny. I went into my mom's room and half of her closet was gone, which explains the big bag Adam was talking about. I called Kim and I was freaking out. I told her to come over. Kim came over and told me that I had to call my dad. And that just felt awkward. I mean, I love my dad and everything, but we're not close. I haven't seen him for a while and we never really talk on the phone. But I had to do what I had to do, and so I called him. Hey dad, it's me, Chloe. He replied, hey kiddo, long time no see. I said, mm, yeah dad, I can't find mom. My dad went silent for a moment there and then said, what do you mean you can't find her? Have you called her? I replied back, her phone is in her room dad, and Adam says she left in the morning. My dad said he will come over. Kim and I went up to my mom's room and I found a note on her bed. The note said, I'm sorry, Chloe. I'm at the hospital. I promise I'll pay you back. By that time, my dad had arrived. Why did everything get so complicated? Why is my mother like that? Me, my dad, Kim and Adam, we all went to the hospital together. My dad spoke to the receptionist and said, I'm here for Charlotte White. Where is she, please? The woman replied, she's getting ready for her surgery. I said, what surgery? The woman replied back, this is confidential information, I'm sorry. I screamed at her and said, I'm her daughter, now tell me where is my mom? Another woman stepped in and said, I'm so sorry, Mrs. White is getting ready in room 104. And we all went up to the room. We found mom in a white hospital gown, ready for Anastasia. I sat down next to her and dad just stood there. Mom, what's wrong? My mom didn't answer my question. She just started crying. Dad took Adam outside the room and left us alone. Mom said, 
I'm just getting my face and a few things fixed. I'm getting a facelift, Chloe. I said nothing back. When she's the one I can always count on to cheer me up, now what am I supposed to do? Imagine the shock and confusion when this strong woman, my mother, a strong single mother, is paying thousands of dollars for someone to take a knife to the very face that comforted me the first time I fell off my bike and cried when I got sick. For the last year, she has refused to be in pictures because she's so obsessed with her laughter lines and chubby cheeks. So, ever the problem solver, she has decided to do something about it. But it's a horrible turn of affairs that her solution will hospitalize her for two days and leave her with deep scars behind her ears. My heart just sank. I couldn't believe she felt so bad about her face. I imagined the hours she must have spent alone, gazing sadly into that mirror, wishing away features that, to me at least, are totally beautiful. Why would something so extreme be necessary for her to be happy with how she looks? This was the first time I had seen her without makeup on in as long as I could remember. She looked tired and nervous. Well, we were both bundles of nerves, but I tried to make small talk to distract her from the dawning reality that she was facing major surgery. There was no way of talking her out of it. After two days, Dad took me and Adam to visit her. As we entered the recovery room, the first thing she said was, I wish I hadn't done it. She had a tight, swollen face, thick purple scars running down the sides of her neck, and was being attended by two nurses. They were showing her how to put on the head straps she had to wear for the next two weeks. Why did I do this? She repeatedly asked me. I wanted to cry, though at this point all I could do was thank the nurses, pick up my mom's bags, and most importantly, reassure her that I'm sure she would look amazing. When she was in the hospital, she had noisy machines attached to her for 48 hours and that made it difficult to sleep. And worst of all, she felt trapped and helpless. The week after the operation, she seemed sad, drained and confused. She slept badly because she couldn't lie down and felt a lot of pain around her head caused by the clips holding her wounds in place. I'm sure you're going to look fantastic when it's all healed. I told her over and over again. A week later, I went with her to have her stitches removed. The surgeon said, Mrs. White, your body thinks it's been hit by a train, so it's normal to feel woozy at this stage. I looked at my mom and told her, Promise me that this is the last time you put yourself in so much risk like that. And before she could even say anything back, she looked at the surgeon and told him, I'd like to talk to you about liposuction around my middle. When's the soonest you can fit me in? And my mom will have yet another operation next month. I will have to go through the whole miserable process again, with no assurance that this procedure will be the one to finally make her happy with the way she looks. We went back home. My mom stood in front of the same mirror, still not looking happy. I just went upstairs and texted Liam a long apology because I bailed on him. Well, my mom and I never discussed the money she took from me. All I know is that the face that will look back at me over lunch or at my prom won't be her face anymore. It will be a synthetic version of her, reimagined and sculpted by a doctor promising her the self-esteem she was so desperately seeking. This experience has left me with one unanswered question. What is she really spending all this money and heartache trying to fix? And no, I will not be discussing what her new face looks like because the main thing is that it doesn't look like my mom.